Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you today? I am great. Make sure my volume was working when nobody answered. I thought, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Where is everybody today? <laughs> see do we have everyone's just starting to come on so we'll give it a couple minutes we're not starting till nine. Oh, there's mike few curtis my two comrade comrades today my two helpers all right well we'll give it a couple minutes it's nine o'clock but we'll get one more minute and we'll get started i am not sure if um, Brooke wants this to go to Facebook Live or not. Do you know, Mike? I'm going to say no. Okay, good. So we don't have to worry. Um, I'm here, but I'm going to turn off my camera because I'm making bread and you guys don't need to see the faces I make when I do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that you will listen and participate and unmute when you can. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, everybody. So I am Lorna Helms. Is everybody here today for Find and Win the Buyer? Yay. How's the night going? I would love to hear. I mean, I haven't seen you for a week. So tell me some ahas that have been going on for you. This is where you unmute and you tell me. Um, one aha that I had, uh, was changing the way that I ask questions, um, just because I've been asking, uh, close ended questions. I needed to ask more open end questions so that way I can get more information. I like that digging a little deeper with great questions. It takes time and practice to get there with those questions. Don't you think? Yeah. Cause at first it was like very weird to really ask those questions, especially when it's new people. We're not new people, but just people that you used to know in the past, but it's been a while. So it's just kind of weird to bring those open-ended questions right off the bat. So it's more about smoothing it in. Right, I love that. And just getting, getting the connection redeveloped, right? For all of that sphere of influence. And that might not happen on the first phone call. It might take a little bit, right, to grow that, so. It's like a seed, it takes time. What else? I've, I've learned that there are no shortage of resources at Keller Williams, um, but also at the same token, we get all this great training, but you really have to implement it and put it into practice. And Keller Williams is great at encouraging that because you don't wanna sit on the sidelines, you wanna get in the game. That's awesome. Implementation, right? Why sit in, you know, 30, what, 18 classes times three hours. I can't even do that math and not implement everything that you're learning, right? So that's awesome. I love that. Give me one more aha before we get started. Um, I think the use of scripts has been so helpful, like practicing those. Sometimes I am just so excited and I just, my words get all jumbled. So like knowing the scripts ahead of time has been so helpful. And so it's been oh, a good aha. I love that aha because you know what? So many people fight against those scripts. Does anybody ever feel that way and maybe fight against it? I don't need those scripts. I just gonna wing it. Yeah, Lorna, that's funny that you would mention that. Um, uh, my name is Curtis. I work in the uh, Concord office, Boston Northwest. Uh, before I did um, real estate, I was in 25, 25 years in sales in high-end luxury jewelry, like you know, $300,000, $400,000 diamonds, that kind of stuff. And it was funny because when I first got here, I really fought against the scripts. So I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound like me. This doesn't sound like me. And then I started to really think about going back to my sales. And it was funny because whenever anybody said, well, I think I want a better color, I would immediately go into, oh, well, honestly, you don't need a better color because you can't tell the difference from the face up. I mean, I knew exactly what to say, when to say it and how to say it. And I'm thinking, I've been using scripts the whole 25 years I've been doing jewelry sales, but it sounded so natural because 
it was genuine and it was an education factor. It was part of getting what you need to get across to somebody and doing it in a very efficient manner. So I quit fighting it because we all use scripts every day long, every day, all day long without realizing it because we always have relative responses to things that come at us. We just don't look at it that way every day. I love that. Awesome. So you now met Curtis, who's here to help me today. And of course, we have Mike, our MCTT, and he is going to be the technical guy checking the chat and um, helping to let me know if there are any questions. So first of all, I have to say thank you. I see lots of faces on here, which tells me this group is going to play all in. So your screen helps me to keep the energy going. And I love that you unmuted. So feel free to do that. I mean, the chat is great, but don't feel like you have to wait for the chat in order to ask a question or participate. Sound good? All right, who's ready to find and win some buyers today? Woo, right, yes. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna share my screen and we are going to get started. Did everybody see that? All right, good. So does everybody have the participant guide? I can only see two faces. So hopefully there's a lot of yeses <laughs> coming across. Um, that's gonna be important just to follow along and to write notes if you would like. So have you seen the screen before everybody? Right? This is what successful agents do every single day. They lead generate for buyers and sellers. They grow their business. Today, we are gonna be focused on that part of it, lead generating for buyers and sellers. So I have to ask you a question. Have you already started lead generating for buyers and sellers while you've been in Ignite? That's yeah. a yes, right? That's the whole point of the phone calls. So that's awesome. All right, I just wanna make sure that you guys know this is an active class, not a passive class. So lead generating. So first thing we're gonna talk about is finding the buyers, all right? We're gonna talk about cultivating. Once you find those buyers, how do you cultivate that? We're gonna qualify buyers. Then we're gonna have make sure that we talk about getting ag the agreement signed. You guys ready to get started? All right. So this is one of my favorite slides and I'm not sure, you guys don't have to tell me, Mike, if you guys can't see it. I'm trying to put you guys so you're not blocking the screen. All right. It looks good. All right, good, thank you. So, before you can be begin to learn how to handle leads that may come your way, we have to find them, right? So where do we find them? Where do we find buyer leads? Um, I've been finding buyer leads on social media. Social media is one way, that's right. Where else? Sphere of influence. Sphere of influence, friends and family. Ooh, I see Mike holding up a phone. Unrepresented buyers at um, open houses. Unrepresented buyers when you're helping or hosting an open house. Curtis, how did you get into real estate? Um, <laughs> the short story is I got tired of making all kinds of money for everybody else <laughs> and, and not, you know, allowing the customer service that I had for my clients to, to come back towards, you know, to, to make a better life for myself. And, and I thought the only way I could do that is work in real estate where I'm still, you know, working with clients every day in and out, um, you know, having great customer service, um, you know, from look from 2018 to 2019, I gave myself a $67,000 raise from so one year to the next where my last job for, from one year to the next, I got a 27 cent an hour raise. Where else can you do that? Two is 
I love helping people get to another point in their life. And I love doing it with, you know, joy, compassion, you know, coming from contribution, those kinds of things. But that's what put me on the path of real estate because I could set my own destiny. I could do as much work as I wanted to do, make as much money as I wanted to make. I, I don't feel like I work, which I, I mean, that's not true because yesterday I had a bunch of offers that I had to, to deal with. That was awesome. But for the most part, I don't feel like I'm working because I love what I do. I love working with people. So Curtis, I was talking more about, I love that. And how did you get into real estate? Who did you meet? Oh. Where did you meet them? <laughs> and my whole point is where do you find buyers, right? So how did you get into real estate? That's funny. Uh, I was at the grocery store in Sudbury uh, at Sudbury Farm. And I had some things out on my, um, on the belt, you know, to go through the register. And it's funny because I all start conversations like this too, but there was somebody behind me looking at what I had laid out and they're like, oh, what are you, she was like, what are you making for dinner? And I said, oh, I'm making this, I'm making that, I'm making this. And we started having a little conversation and uh, she said, oh, I'm in real estate. Like, oh, you, you, don't move. I, I've got to talk to you. I've got, you know, I want to talk to you. And so I, I took off. And it was funny because she just told the story a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and she said that crazy man just took off and left. And he said he wanted me to wait. So anyway, I came back, met her outside the door. We had lunch the next week. And then um, she gave me her whole packet of terms of glossary terms for the test. I went to class Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, studied Friday, took the exam on Saturday. And I think I started at KW, I think, five or six days later. So the point is this. Talking to people just- Everywhere, anywhere. everywhere you can find buyers. That was the whole point, right? Do it, not be a secret agent. Do not be a secret agent. So noticing that somebody has something interesting on their belt of the grocery store, talking to your bank teller, right? You, there are buyers everywhere. So remember that that is the, the secret sauce is knowing the buyers are everywhere. But so thinking about that 89%, this is according to the National Association of Realtors, 89% of buyers purchase their home through a real estate agent, 89%. So let me tell you, my friends, I was in real estate prior to the internet, almost prior to like email. And the fact is this. They still need us. When the real estate industry started to open up to the internet and the consumer could get the same information that we held so tightly in our little books that we got every other week, we were nervous. People were panicked. <gasps> what are they going to need us for? They need us. And this tells us that, right? 89% of the buyers still need someone to purchase their home. Why do they need us? Because they don't want to deal with all the paperwork, the negotiation, and all the hard work to actually buy a house. They just want to move into their house. <laughs> they want to do the fun stuff. I agree with you on that. And they need us because they don't actually know how to do that, right? We are the experts. And the fact is this, and I think I mentioned this last week, all of you have taken the real estate exam. You've studied hard and you have more experience than the average Joe. Would you agree with that? You have more expertise and knowledge. This next statistic is super important. 41% of buyers found their agent through a referral from friends or family, 41. So when we tell you that you should be lead generating with your sphere of influence, why is this number so important? Because it's almost half. It's almost half. So if everyone in your circle and sphere of influence knows that you're in real estate and 41% of the people who are buying houses found it through a referral and you taught your sphere of influence to refer you, you think the chances are likely that you're going to get a referral? That's right. Top of mind, my friends, top of mind. 75% of buyers interviewed only had one real, only interviewed one real estate agent during their home search. One. Why is that important for you?
it shows how competitive or yeah it shows how competitive it is to be somebody's real estate agent right they may not shop it shows how important it is to make a good first impression good first impression yep so why it's that is a huge piece why to connect with people right that connection so for instance somebody calls and they say that they're thinking you know I saw a sign at 123 Main Street, let's just say, or they called on a Facebook ad and you say, oh yeah, that house is under agreement. All right, have a good day. No, that's not what we're doing, right? We wanna engage them. We wanna ask questions, keep the relationship going because you have one shot to wow them or possibly one shot. Right, so making those connections immediately. And then 51% of buyers visit an open house as a way to search for homes. Now I do realize COVID may have changed this up a little bit. Would you agree in your area it's changed it a little? It has, and they're still happening. Are open houses still happening in your, in your market? All right. Yeah. In the chat, I want you to say, Yes or no, have you hosted an open house? Mike's going to keep an eye. If you have hosted or shadowed an open house, write yes. And if you have not, write no. All right, we seem to be a pretty good... Uh I saw a yes that said yes, and I picked up three buyers. I caught that quickly as it was coming through. So if it is a no, write this down. I will shadow or host an open house next weekend. And then I want you to write an agent in your office who would let you shadow their open house. or host an open house. In our office, we do three shadows as new agents, minimum. And that's to learn from different personalities because the way Curtis hosts an open house is definitely different than the way Lorna does. Curtis does an awesome job. He makes an experience. Um, and it might be different from the way Mike does it, right? We all do it differently. So I think it's really important to make sure, ooh, I see two, this weekend got one buyer. Right. The, so. the, the one of the things that I, I did earlier on is I made a little postcard and every Monday morning I would get up and at six o'clock I would send it to the entire office and it, it, it the postcard said open house by Curtis, you know, music, musical ambiance, fresh chocolate chip cookies, fresh florals, great follow. I mean, I would I would I would pay, take a picture of all the, the cookies and the flowers and all of that and, and send it out to everybody in the office and I would and I would be the first one on Monday morning to do that. And I would have, you know, I would have open houses for that weekend by, you know, probably later that day. That's right. So I see a few questions and I'm gonna kind of jump on a little bit. One was, I see, think about, you hadn't heard from your mentor or coach, definitely reach out if you have not. If you have a productivity coach in your office, reach out to them if you have not heard. Every office runs differently. I'm just going to tell you that. So I'm just giving you general consensus. The other piece is how do you find an open house? Curtis just gave you a great idea, didn't he? Right, send an email. The other thing I will tell you, call people. So on your daily calling, add one agent from your office to call. Get to know them. One of the things that Curtis impressed me so much with, besides his daily email, his weekly emails, was that he built relationships within the office. And so in doing that, he was afforded opportunity. He was the go-to for many of our top producers to host open houses. My third year, I, uh, I'd, I'd capped my second year, but my third year I'd capped, only one transaction was not from somebody I got from an open house hosting for somebody else. So $4.1 million worth of volume 
that year was all from buyers I picked up at open houses I did for other agents. I love that. Curtis, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, so I actually want to attend more open houses. How do you go about the process of actually asking or converting clients and, and leads from other agents open houses? Because a lot of people are like, hey, this is my listing or this is my open house. Like, Okay, that's, I mean, Lorna will probably address some of that in regard to, uh, because there's a difference between shadowing and holding an open house. If you're shadowing, you're just learning. That's, that you're uh, probably at that point in time, you're not going to get, um, you may not get leads from that. I know that sometimes, um, you know, I was still given the leads when I was doing shadowing in the very beginning. Uh, but then when you're hosting an open house, then typically that agent will, you know, allow you to do, you know, get leads from that. But uh, Lorna will probably go into that more quickly. Another thing too is, and I was going to talk to Lauren about this yesterday when we had our, our coaching session, is uh, I actually do a class called Romancing the Stone that talks about how to hook buyers at open houses. And right. so we may talk about that at another time to, to do that class. Okay. All right. We're definitely going to talk about cultivate and conversion for sure in a little bit. So great question. And that is a huge piece, right? And it all starts with that connection. So everybody on page three of your participant guide, um, I want you to think about where are you going to begin looking for buyers? And I want you to write down two sources that you're committing to in your soul to find buyers to, in this week. So write it down and then share it in the text. I mean, in the chat. So everybody write it down and put it in the in the chat. All right. Cultivating. Go ahead. We have um, sphere of influence, uh, social networking, uh, open house and coffee shop was a good one. Uh, calling past clients, uh, cold calls. Yep, Facebook campaigns. So, yep, great ideas. I love that. Now, coffee shop. Who wrote coffee shop? All right, Carrie, tell me what that means. I love that. Well, similar to what Curtis was talking about, instead of just um, that, that seemed to be a lucky person to run into at the grocery store. Um, instead, just really planning myself at a coffee shop and maybe picking up coffee for a couple of people, every random person coming through line, maybe even the person behind me and um, making sure they have my card and, um, you know, doing something like that, trying to strike up that conversation. I love that. And, you know, there's many an agent who sets up their laptop, at least before COVID, and now again, you can do this, is set your laptop up in a Starbucks or a coffee shop. You know what you wanna have on your laptop? A sticker that says KW or Keller Williams real estate, right? Something that that way when you have it open, people can see. Having a name tag on. Having a name tag all the time. Yeah, having t-shirts that say Keller Williams Realty, right? So making sure you got gear. You have to be able to, anywhere you go, people should know. Yeah, sharing, sharing Where's the best place out. to get gear? Uh, Mike. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. Where's the best place to get gear? Because I want gear. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you take this one. You're good with gear. Yeah, so you could try uh, You could try the Red Label store, which is online. So um, you can go there. That has a lot of KW type stuff. Um, if you just type in KW um, vendors on a search for Google, you'll find a bunch that are Keller Williams approved. And what that means is that they have all of the logos and everything already. So you won't have any upcharges uh, for that type okay. of thing. All right, I'm on it. Yeah, but get creative, right? Do something that somebody else might not be doing. So I don't know if anybody saw it, but I held up my coffee mug 
That's the QR code to my consumer app, to my KW consumer app. Okay, I've got people that just hit it because they want to know what the QR code is. I don't say what it is, but it's kind of like that FOMO. What am I missing out on, right? Fear of missing out. So, um, you know, you can get creative with stuff. It works. Thanks. Love, that's a great idea. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Mike, tell them about what that, you had a jacket. I can't remember exactly, but I remember. Oh yeah, so I, I actually, it's a vest that I wear over like my button down shirt. It's got my logo on the front, but then it has my market center's logo on the back. I wear that everywhere and I get stopped grocery stores, coffee places. It starts the conversation with people because they like, a lot of people just want to know like what's going on with the market in your response to if somebody says, how's the market? It's always fantastic because it doesn't matter if you're a buyer or a seller, we're going to find a way to make that happen. So make sure that you're always upbeat and positive about the market. I love that. And make sure you follow up. Right. I mean, one of the great things about Mike's QR code, right, is that he captures their information and is able to have a follow up system. So the key is in follow up, my friends. All right, we're going to continue on. So the next page, you've got the lead, right? You have done open houses, you've talked to your sphere of influence, you've connected with other agents. Do you know that many busy agents maybe can't take buyers right now? So another reason to develop relationships. If you got a buyer from an agent in the office and you had to pay a referral fee, would that be okay? Because guess what? Paying whatever the referral fee is on a commission versus paying zero on zero, which is more money, right? So thinking about making sure you're building those relationships. So we need to cultivate leads. How do we do that? Anybody know if we have any tools that might do that? Smart plans. Smart plans, that is right. And you know, once you have a conversation, every single person can be in a smart plan. Have you guys started working on a smart plan? I see a couple hands, right? Does everybody know what a smart plan means? Right? Means yeah. that it is a plan to keep in touch with your database systematically. Because, you know, I know that I had a great conversation with Curtis and Mike. And I know I'm going to remember exactly what we talked about. And I know that I will remember what date it was I talked to them. And then I'm going to call them again. That will never happen if I don't have them on a smart plan. Ever. And, and speaking of Curtis and Mike, uh, Curtis and Mike are complete opposites when it comes to... Uh, <laughs> I am not a technology guy, and I love that we have him in our office. The thing that's great is he's more technology, so those smart plans and all of that work great for him, and they work really great for me. Uh, but it's great, the, the tools that Keller Williams gives us is because it allows all of us to do things a little differently, to use combinations of those things. I am more of a Popeye. I'm going to bake you some cupcakes and cookies, or I'm going to drop some pansies off, or I'm going to, you know, do that kind of stuff. But I'm also going to keep in touch with, you know, a home buyer's guide and, and your, you know, your home information questionnaire. And I'm going to give you those tools to, to understand that my value is more important than somebody else you ran into. That's why you have to work with me as a buyer agent. Um, but it's great because that's why you can use all of these little tools in the ways that work best for you. Uh, and uh, um, and there's no, no one else has the capability of doing this for you. Uh, and Mike is such a great resource in regard to that because it's tough for a, a, a happy, you know, unicorn Pollyanna kind of guy to do the technology, but we have Mike and that's what makes it all so great. Yeah, so with the, you know, the great point there is, is it doesn't matter what your personality style is or how you approach real estate, right? So we have this awesome platform and command, you know, especially in designs, so that we can easily print off those materials that Curtis is talking about that he gives out for his touches. 
Okay, and you can just as equally share those online and through social media, which is something more that I would do. So no matter what your style, our platform will support that. So definitely dive in and check it out. I love that. And the smart plans are nice because they basically have like triggers, right? If this happens, that should happen next. And it's a nice mix of text, emails, and phone calls to keep in touch. Yep. And you don't have to be technically savvy to use them. There's a whole library that's available for you. You just import the one that you want to use and you're off to the races. Exactly. That is right. So have you guys gone over smart plans in, um, in uh, Ignite at all yet? Yes. Yeah. A little bit. I'm going to share with you some of my favorites, if that is okay. You can all see my command, right? Yes. So first of all, look at this. You see my little task list up top? Don't notice that summer past due. But notice that I have tasks to do. Send a gift. That is an anniversary gift because I put them on a home anniversary smart plan. Do you know what I did? Not only did I put my past clients on, but I looked up in public record my close friends and family and found out their home anniversary and they're on the home anniversary smart plan. So how surprised will your aunt or your uncle or your best friend be when they get a congratulations on your home anniversary in their house that you didn't even sell them? And if they get something from you, but their agent who sold it to them 10 years ago didn't send them something, who are they going to remember? Right? Those can, I are add, big, can I add a tip in on that one? Buyers are, are a big resource because a lot of agents don't like to keep in touch with people after the deal. And when you keep in touch with people, uh, that's another opportunity to do that. I've, I've had referrals from buyers that have bought a listing of mine to give buyers to me to go through the process because of how you treat them, how you keep in touch, how you went through the process. Awesome. And if you ever help somebody move and you can find out what their date was that they moved on, even if it was like eight or nine years ago, make sure you put this date in there and don't call them on the date. Call them like two days before and said, hey, I was just thinking about that time when we moved you. Do you remember all that, all the stuff that we went through? and get into that conversation with them. I've had that happen before and I've gotten two deals off of it. So that's definitely a technique that works. It's the building of the relationship is what I keep hearing from all of you, right? And that is it. So what I want you all to do now, this is gonna be multitasking, is first to watch me, but then you're gonna do it yourself. And I know I should know this by now, Mike. Smart plans, there we go. All right, so smart plans. I might have a few in my library <laughs> right here, right? My smart plans. So how did I do that? I went into the library of smart plans and I started looking around. And so some of them you will, you just start seeing what they do. What's their point? Um, I know the very first day we talked a little bit about keeping in touch and how to do that. So the first thing I would tell you is everybody in your sphere of influence should be on a quarterly call plan. So write that down, quarterly call plan. And you just wanna view the steps. You're gonna make a call, 90 days later, you're gonna be reminded to make another call. Because that is the bare minimum that you should be talking with your sphere of influence every 90 days. And that's for all contacts? For all contacts. All right, thanks. You're welcome. The other one that you're gonna, you're actually gonna put yourself on today. Let's see if I can find it. I'm gonna have to just do, do, do monthly. Up oh, there we go. Bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. You're going to add that smart plan. I already have it, so it won't let me do it. Okay, and basically, it's you're going to send them an email. 14 days later, you're going to send them another email. I set myself up on this because I wanted to see what it would look like to the consumer. Mike, you look like you want to say something. 
Yep, just make sure that you have um, your address or that you have assigned a neighborhood to that contact. So for yourself, when you're testing it out and putting yourself on this plan, make sure that you've put in your primary address or you have assigned yourself a neighborhood in your contact record. That's right. So the very first day, you all, I told you all to add yourself as a contact. Do you remember that? Right, Mike, remember I told everybody to do that. Did everybody do that? Are you in command as the contact? Yes. All right, thank you, Carrie. <laughs> I only can see three of you, so I have to scroll through to see heads if I don't hear anybody. So making sure that you have your address in your contact information. If you don't, click on the little edit button and then go ahead and add that in. Then what Mike was talking about was making sure you have neighborhoods here. So once you have your address, neighborhoods will pop up. You can add new neighborhoods, right? To, to try to find other things. And then over here, since you've got a smart plan, you're gonna add the smart plan. Find out after you've saved the different smart plan, add yourself to the bi-weekly. Think, yeah, bi-weekly, right? Correct. Smart plan. So, any questions? There has to be a question. Everybody, Lauren, I have a question. Yes, this Carrie. Carrie. Um, I'm. I have a ton of emails for people or addresses, but I don't have everything. Like, I don't have a lot of phone numbers, and um, so, for instance, the neighborhood. I have all the addresses for the neighborhoods and the names. But is there a way to get phone numbers? There is a way to get phone numbers. There's a couple different ways. Yep. Right? So, yep. so the one that's free would be um, whitepages.com. And that does a pretty good job. Um, I do recommend if you are really in a hard place of getting phone numbers and other information that you sign up for the White Pages Premium. Um, it's only about $5 a month and it pays for itself. So with being able to track down that information. The other thing is the social media. Don't forget about social media and Facebook. If you are friends with somebody on Facebook, you have access to Messenger. So you can either send them a direct message or if you uh, really pay attention to that Messenger window, there's actually a little phone that you can click and it'll initiate a phone call to that person's number of record in Facebook. It won't tell you what it is, but it'll at least it'll make their phone ringing. You can get a hold of them. Thank you. The other thing for me is that I sent out red day postcards and you could send a postcard out to your neighborhood if you have a farm area. Um, I've done one postcard that had just my app on it, like curious what's happening, download my app with the link or QR code. And then when they do that, they're using their phone and you have their phone number. So that's one way. Red Day, I did send out a, I'm donating, you know, let's donate. And now they have to call me or text me to get a bag to fill with groceries for Red Day, which is Thursday. Mike, you were going to show something. You look like you were going to show something. I was, I had my postcard. I love that. And then you can put your QR code in your contact information right on there. So if they want to get a hold of you. They have it. You want everything to be reciprocal as much as possible. So cultivating leads is that consistent way of talking and keeping in touch with people. Oh, somebody liked your postcard, Mike. Thank you. Um, and there's been a lot of in the chat about where to get your QR code. So I'm going to do a little bit of research on this. I'll post it into the chat so you guys can find that on your own. And if you um, need to do any sort of like sharing screen, you're welcome to do that, Mike, if you need to jump in with that. Uh, whenever you'd like me to do that, I can do that right off the bat if you want. All right. Well, if you want to show them how to do a QR code while it's fresh in our minds, that's great. If you need a minute, then we can wait. No, nope, good to go. All um, right, go ahead. Do you, I need to make you a host? Uh, yes, thank you. All right, this is going to be gold, you guys, not only just for buyers, but for listings down the road, everything, knowing how to make a QR code, huge.
Okay, so I am actually going to go, I'm going to show you where you can find it in KW world for your app. Okay, that's the first thing. So you go to mykw.kw.com. And it's just your regular Keller Williams login, as soon as that comes up. And then you're going to go under home. Okay, and it says agent website admin. You just click on that. And then the only other number you need to remember is 4.5. Okay, we're going to number 4.5. And that's your QR code for your app. Okay, it'll have all that in there for you. If it's not listed, you might just have to pull and select your market center from the pull down, but you can copy this image, save that image uh, to your desktop, and that is your QR code for your app. Okay, so that's definitely one way to do it. The other way to do it is if you have your, um, your app code, so you're either getting it here or you can get it from command. Okay, so if you're in command and you're in consumer, under site and app settings, there's URLs and your app URL is right there as well. If I'm going through this too quickly, reach out to me afterwards and we can do a little separate session on how to find that if I'm going too fast. If you, once you have that code and you copy it, when you hit paste, if you're in Google Chrome, okay, once it loads, all you have to do is click on the URL and then over here on the right, next to the star, to bookmark, there's a little create QR code. So if you click that button, it creates a QR code for whatever web address that you're on. And you can download and save that to your computer. Yeah, so very cool. And you guys, you just learned this in like five minutes. I spent a Sunday morning figuring this out. <laughs> so the fact that you guys just found that out, you guys are so psyched. Mike, the only question I have is, have you figured out how to get rid of the dinosaur in the middle of that? Yes, I have actually. So if you go to your phone, okay, and is it okay if I keep sharing? Yeah, go right ahead. All right, great. Let me just share my phone screen. So I don't... We don't see your screen, you know that, right? Yep, it's coming. Okay. <laughs> Takes a second for it to connect. There we go, zoom. Okay. You see my, um, you don't see it yet, do you? Oh, there yeah. we go. Now it's there. You guys see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so if I go to um, my app on my phone, Yes, I needed to try to remove the top off of a pepper mill if you were wondering what that was. <laughs> um, so I'm here at my on my consumer app. If I click on the URL at the top, you can see that down in the middle, right above the keyboard is that little, um, right next to the microphone is the button to click um, for the, whoop, standby. <laughs> it worked the way I wanted it to. Oh, I'm sorry, totally, totally different way. Hold on, get back to my URL. Cancel. Is it the up arrow? Yes. So you do the up arrow on your web page. So you see right next to the URL, there's that little up arrow to the right? Yes. Click on the up arrow and then create QR code is in the middle. Ooh. That is now the QR code without the dinosaur. Okay. So make sure you're using Chrome on your phone. Use the up arrow, create the QR code. All right, Curtis, I know that even you can do this. We're going to try it. You and I tomorrow when we're in the office, we'll try it together. <laughs> All right. So was that helpful? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. So when you send out this QR code, which I actually had just made one and I sent out a bunch of like introduction letters with that with my QR code to my business page on Facebook. How do I know? Um, they're probably just getting the letters, but how do I know when they've scanned it? Will I, will it trigger in my like? Yep. Oh. So it's not when they scan it, it's when they okay. click on it, it's going to open the, have them download the app and it'll be your branded version of the app. So when okay. they sign it up on your page. app, it automatically creates a contact record in command ah. with their information. Wow. Yeah. I actually have been getting some, uh, so I sent out my app to four people yesterday and each of them, every once they downloaded it and signed up, they automatically 
I automatically got the notification from command. So I automatically yeah. for you guys. Very cool. Okay. Very powerful guys. Very powerful. Awesome. All right. So we have found that lead and now we're going to continue to cultivate it to make sure that we follow up in a systematic way. So now we're going to move on to qualifying. can see my screen again. All right, so qualifying buyer leads. This is so important. We really want to understand when we're talking with somebody, are they an A, B, or C? A, able, ready, and willing to purchase. B, able and ready, but not right now. And C is not ready. How do we find that out? By asking questions. Talking with them. And where you got the lead. Depends where you get. I like all of those answers, right? So it is asking questions, connecting with them. Where did you get the lead? Sometimes that will tell you a little bit about if they're serious or not. Motivation. Motivation, right? And it all comes down to having a system, I know you probably heard that word before in KW world, having a system ready to go. So I'm going to start with open houses because I love Curtis's way of capturing leads at open houses. So Curtis, how do you figure out at an open house if someone's an A, B, or C lead? Well, first of all, they're at an open house. So they're you know, they're at that point where they're obviously either doing research, looking at the neighborhoods, you know, that they have interest in and price points, that kind of stuff. Uh, they're in there, um, you know, so they're definitely probably at the top of the list. However, that's not necessarily true. I met somebody last year, uh, at, actually, Lorna, when I did your open house, uh, that was in what, uh, no, late October, November? November when I had COVID. Yeah, oh, that's right, yeah, that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually just started putting offers in right now. So that was, you know, six months later, kept in touch with them the whole time. So anyway, um, what I do is, um, it, it, do you mind if I kind of go over my little- No, go right ahead. Okay, so when somebody comes into, um, whether my listing, like the listing yesterday, the, the question I like to ask is, you know, first of all, what brings you in today? They're like, uh, and they'll usually tell you, oh, we're, you know, doing this or doing this or doing this. And, and when I ask people to sign in, I say, you know what, since you already work with a great agent, please go ahead and put their name down on your sign in sheet. So I can contact them to let them know that you were in. Now, mind you, I've been doing individual contact sheets with COVID. So not everyone is touching the same page. But um, that's usually when someone will say, oh, I'm not working with an agent. You'll notice the first thing I didn't do is say, oh, are you working with an agent? Commission breath, desperation, puts a wall up, people are like, you know, the, the, it, it makes it about you and you wanting to grab them as a buyer. You don't want to do that. You want to lower their defenses. You want them to understand you're coming from contribution and you want to help. So since you already work with a great agent, go ahead and put their name down. That way I can talk to them. One thing I learned in jewelry, when you show somebody they don't what something they don't want, they tell you what they do want. So when I assume they already have a great agent, the first thing you tell me is, oh, oh, no, we don't. So I've already lowered their inhibitions in regard to getting the information. Wonderful. If you don't have an agent, that's no problem. Go ahead and take a look. If you have questions, just, just come and find me. But I would like this. If you could find me when you're done, let me know what feedback you have so I can let my um, sellers know. Could you do that for me? Every, and they say yes, always. I had a guy wait for 25 minutes at a busy open house because he told me he was going to come back and give me feedback on the house. So what happens is I have my little tiny sign-in card like this, individual ones that I do for the open houses now. So only one person touches it. But then what I do is transfer their information to a, a little larger card that has a little more of their information. I used to use this in jewelry, but instead of rooms and bathrooms, I used to put ring size, birth month, you know, what are your favorite stones and metals and that kind of stuff. So now I just use it in real estate. So while they're looking at the house, I kind of transfer the most of their information from this to the bigger card. So I have a, a place to ask information. They come back to me 
I say, okay, can you give me some feedback on the house? So while they're giving me feedback on the house, I'm using this little form, you know, to, to do that. You know, oh, this has four bedrooms. We really only need three. This has about one bath. We really need two baths or more, you know, uh, because, you know, our mother's going to stay with us for a while. They'll start giving you information because you want feedback. But the funny thing is, is again, when they see something they don't want, they'll tell you what they do want. So once they are done giving me that information, I say, you know what, that's great. I appreciate it so much that you gave me the information that I can give some feedback to the sellers. This is where the table turns. However, it seems that I've written down the perfect description of the house that you would like to purchase. I would love to have the opportunity to work for you and let you understand the value I can add to finding the perfect home. Would you allow me to do that for you? And most people are like, oh yeah, that'd be great because you've already gotten them to interact with you by coming to you and helping you do something. Now you're offering them some help. So I typically offer my home buyers uh, information, which is basically coming from the home buyer or the buyer's um, presentation. I've just taken the questionnaire out of the middle of it and separated it, and I send it over. I'm like, this is a great tool. It'll show you how you look at house, uh, how you will use your house and, and let you kind of get an, uh, you know, a big view of how you're going to use your home. I can email that to you later today. Would you like that? And they're like, well, yeah, because you're giving them something. They want something. And then that's a great time to say, I just want to confirm your email address because we all know people write too fast, they're too messy, or they don't write down the right email address because, you know, they're at that point, they may not want you to contact them. Well, then I get to ask, ask for clarity on the email address and get it. So I get home, I a great meeting you today. I'm gonna to give you the home buyer's uh, information questionnaire that'll help you look at how you're gonna look at a home. I'm also gonna send you the buyer's guide and I would love for you to look that over. I'm gonna contact you in a couple of days to see if we can set up a time to kind of go through that so we can start your journey. I also send them a handwritten note that said, it was so wonderful to meet you. Then I follow up on Wednesday and, and with a phone call and say, I wanna make sure you got your thank you note. And I'd love to set up a time so we can talk. And the people that I met at Lorna's uh, open house, you know, they signed their they signed their buyer agreement with me because they even went to a couple of open houses and people said, oh, you're working with an agent. They're like, yeah, we work with Curtis. And it was like, they shut everybody down because all of those things that I did to make them understand. And by the way, I also put them on my cupcake list for Christmas. So I delivered cupcakes to them, even though we weren't working together. Um, so I did all of those little things. And, and all of those things are those things that I kept hooking and hooking and hooking. So, but they were things that weren't like, oh, please work with me, please work with me. They were, I'm gonna give to you. I'm gonna show you what I do for you. I'm gonna show you my value. And because of that, you are not going to walk, want to work with anybody else. And I think that's one of the things, that's one reason why I do very well at, at my open houses is because I find a way to give to them that makes them want to give back to me, that makes them, you know, that I get my hook in and they're like, oh, well, there's no one else I want to work with. And that's how I get my buyers from open houses. So reciprocal, building connections, asking questions, right? and qualifying them, right? By asking them questions about four bedrooms versus three and price range and all those things, that's the qualification of the buyer. Yeah, um, and, and Lorna, with, with all of those questions, they'll, like that couple that I met that I just signed that just started putting offers in, they immediately said to us, they're like, you know, we're at this point, we're paying off our student loans or we're doing this or we're doing this. So we may not, we're getting married this month. So we may not start looking until here. I just know that they are a B. That automatically puts me. Now, does that mean I'm not going to stay in charge with them? Absolutely not. Um, because by the time you don't do that and you get to the time that they said they were going to start looking, They've already found somebody else because you haven't kept in touch with them. There was a guy I sold a, I worked part-time for two Christmases at, at the jewelry exchange in Sudbury for fun at Christmas. Uh, I met a guy there. I sold him an engagement ring, uh, turned around, you know, he wasn't ready quite wise, credit wise, but I kept in touch with him for a year and a half, uh, sold him a house. I was at, manned the grill at their wedding um, and 
in two weeks, I put their house back on the market because they're getting ready to sell because they're moving. Uh, so even it was a year and a half before I, when I met them to when they purchased and I kept in touch the entire time because when they are ready and they've also referred two people to me. So you mean you meet somebody and they don't right away buy a house, Curtis? Nope. I've actually had someone go two years and three months before they bought a house. Uh, so no, they don't. But but look, I need to sell a house in five years or I need to sell a house in another year and a half. I always need to sell houses. That's my job. <laughs> so uh, my job is to keep those people, you know, come. And you know me, Lorna. Uh, all my people from the very beginning, there are very few, one or two. And that's another thing I love about real estate is I get to choose who I work with. And if you are annoying me or, you know, <laughs> you know I, I'm like, bye-bye. As our coach says, set them free because those kinds of people aren't the kind of people you want, you know. So anyway, you can pick and choose who you work with. But I, you know, I, I'm always going to holiday parties or having people over for dinner or you know, dropping this off or dropping firewood off or all this stuff. I always have these other little personal things I do along with the great things that Mike can teach you about uh, keeping in touch with people in command. Um, but it's those little things I think that make people understand that, that you're there to help them in a personal connection, spending the most money they'll ever spend in their life on you know something they're going to live in that's very personal that keeping in touch with those kinds of things doesn't matter when because then it is about their timeline and, and what they need when they need it and not about you making money and that's that's why you're going to keep those clients and that's why they're going to work with you whether it's tomorrow or next year or two years from now that's right so figuring out by asking questions if they're ready now right and they want to be under contract quickly if b they're ready and willing but not quite yet right maybe they have to get married maybe they need to get their credit fixed a lot of the things curtis just mentioned right maybe they have to get wait for their lease to expire which there's some strategies with that but we can never tell anybody to break a lease just telling you that um so there's lots of different reasons why they might not be right now um, and then C, not ready yet, right? They, they may be a perfect scenario, right? Like they have to sell their property um, or they want a specific neighborhood or specific condo complex or things like that. Does that all make sense? The different types of leads? And by asking questions, you'll know. But the secret is this, and Curtis mentioned this as well, keeping in touch whether they're an A, B, or C buyer right? Keeping in touch. And whether it is Curtis's way of that purposeful, keeping in touch, sending cupcakes, you know, pop buys, things like that, or it's command and, and purposeful set um, things that you're doing, you got to keep in touch with everybody to stay top of mind, no matter what type of lead they are. But the way we figure that all out is our buyer lead sheet. So Mike, I don't know if this is in the chat or not, but this is basically your system to figure out the important pieces in the buying process. It will help you establish by asking questions, price, motivation, location, wants and needs. Is there a difference between wants and needs yeah. What is it? What you actually need is different from what you want. Want is like your your dreams, your fantasy. Needs is what you actually need to survive or live. So, you know, a need, if you have six people living in a house, might be two bathrooms. <laughs> that might be an actual need, but it might be a want, right? Depending. So asking really important questions um, around that, you'll actually be able to determine whether or not it's a want or a need. So the buyer lead sheet is not the buyer consultation, everybody. It is a snapshot and basic information so that way you can set the appointment to dig deeper on all of this. 
So the three deep questions that we talk about in a lot of our classes, yes, you wanna be working on that here. And this is to get the basic information to get to the next level. Does that make sense? Yeah, and Lorna, the thing that the, the thing that you're the thing that you're talking about there is, and this is how I do my little list in regard to that, is once we have the consultation and we've we I've, they've filled out their home buyer's information sheet that I give them, uh, I I tell them I want to know ten things you like, seven things you want, five things you need. Ooh, wait, of wait, course, wait. repeat that again. Ten things you like, seven things you want five things you need. Of course, the seven things and the five things are gonna be included in the 10. But the reason I do that is because when we get to go start going to houses and I have these five things they need and we have those five things they need, I can use that as a tool to say, remember you said these are the five things you need. Do we need to change this and move something here and something back here? Or are, are we, you know, be, it keeps your buyer on task because if, if they're changing these all back and forth, you need to have another conversation because then you're going to look, you're going to go to house after house after house after house. And then all of these are going to change. You need to make sure that all those five things, the things that they need, you're going to have that conversation. Look, this house meets all your needs that way. Right. We're getting Again. further in the process, but I love the beginning, right? right? And that's right. awesome way to always have the motivation back. So the importance of the lead sheet is to keep you on task, keep you on task, keep the buyer on task, right? But it helps you figure out if they're really ready, right? If they're an A, B, or C buyer by asking the right questions. So Mike, I don't know if it's already in the chat, but can you put the toolkit in the chat? Yep, I'll put it in again. Um, I also put in the buyer lead sheet with a direct link. Awesome. So what I want you all to do now is to capture that buyer lead sheet out of the uh, chat. Everybody get it? Click on it. And I have it here on the screen to review, right? So looking at the questions. So this is Curtis calls and he's asked, you know, he's asking about a property or I meet him in an open house, right? And I'm asking him some questions. So have you guys used tools similar to this? Has anybody been at open houses where they've used, um, had this something similar? I saw a shaking of a head, yes, right? And sometimes it's just a natural conversation. These are all very conversational questions, right? Everybody click on download. I can see everybody's like looking at their screen, which means I know nobody's listening to my voice. The link is awesome and you're going to need that in about two seconds. So I want you to have it or, you know, if you already have it in paper, use that one. Is everybody good? Give me Florida, a, uh, I'm a I'm a little techno with technology. I'm a little challenge. Could you just talk me through that, please? Absolutely. So if you click on the chat box. Yes. At the bottom of the screen mm -hmm. and I put in there a Google link. And it says like share file or something like that. It said there's buyer lead sheet. It's the link that's right above it. Okay. All yeah. right. It, yeah. I, my chat was stuck on yeah. um, the first, the first uh, entries and not down there. Okay. And then click on the link. All right. Copy. Yep. Mike, just shift to copy. I don't know. I just yep, she can copy it. Yep. And then just. And then you can print it. Or you can keep it on your screen. I have mine on my screen, as you can see. All set, Maureen? Yes. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to do a little role play. Curtis, will you be the buyer 
for me. I can't see you. Yes. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna be the agent. You're gonna be the buyer. We're gonna go through the lead sheet a little bit and just get some questions. You are, um, let's see, we have met, let's just say we met in an open house, why not? All right, and Curtis, you've already filled out the contact information here, so I don't need to go through that with you. All right, Curtis, it's been so nice to meet you at the open house. Um, I have a question for you. Has any, have you gone out looking at any other properties with another agent yet? Um, you know, about four or five months ago, I, I went out one time, um, but other than that, no. Okay, awesome. And is there anyone else buying a home with you? Um, no, right now I'm, I'm just looking for something for myself. Oh, awesome, exciting. Um, and are you gonna be living there or are you, are you looking to invest? Um, I'm going to be living there, uh, but at times, um, you know, my mom may uh, come and stay with me in the summer. So it sounds like you may need some extra space for visitors. Well, that'll be fun. I hope now do you get to go visit her sometimes too? Yeah, uh, they're down in Florida, so I get to go down and see her. Uh, plus, I moved from the Midwest, so I have people that I'm inviting all the time out to this area. Um, so it'd be nice to have, you know, a, a, you know, a nice place so I can have company. Extra. Plus, I like to cook and have people over for dinner, so. Ah, so did you like the kitchen in this place? Would that work for you? I did. Um, uh, I did. I do like, um, I would probably update it a little bit, but I'm not afraid of any work. Okay, that's awesome. Have you been looking for a while? Um, probably like the last year and a half to two years been considering doing, you know, going through the buying process. Hmm. And so what's it, you've been thinking about it for about a year and a half. Do you feel like you're more, um, you're more motivated to move right now? What's making you move? Oh uh, yeah. Right now, um, right now and probably in the next year or so. Yeah. So, you know, from now until uh, maybe a year from now. Right. And, um, I think you said that you were renting right now. Is that right? Yeah, I am. Awesome. And do you have a lease? I do, but uh, I've been at this place for quite a while. So I, uh, I think at this point, it's, you know, one of those month to month things that, you know, I could get out of if possible or, or give, you know, like two month notice or whatever. All right. Well, that, that's awesome. It sounds like you have a great relationship with your landlord. I do. No, you're lucky. Um, and now are you getting a mortgage, do you think? Uh, yeah, I would be doing a mortgage. And do you have a relationship with anybody or is that something you might need some help with? Um, I had worked with somebody a few years ago to kind of look at my potential to buy. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm more than open to talk to anybody that I think could, you know, help me out with the process. Awesome. Well, I'll be happy to email you off a, a few names if you'd like. Awesome. That'd be great. Um, and so when you met with that lender last year, what price range did you talk about um, being comfortable in? Well, I'm renting in Sudbury right now and I really like staying in that town. Uh, and again, I don't mind getting a fixer upper, um, you know, so 400 to maybe $625,000. And again, I'm not looking for a big house, you know, make like a three, you know, like a three bedroom ranch with a bath and a half, two baths, you know, something on one level that, you know, I can have company, but I'm not looking for a huge house anyway. And I don't honestly, truly, I don't care if it's a dump. I, I because I, you know, I have all the tools and I've renovated a house before, so I can, I'm no, I'm not afraid of work. All right. All right. That's good to know. Um, and on a scale of one to 10, 10 meaning you must buy a home quickly and one meaning you're not sure um, you'll really buy anything. How would you rate yourself? I'm probably in the five or six range. I, I definitely want a home. Uh, I just need to make sure that all my ducks are in a row financially. And, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a one income house. So I need to make sure that uh, it's a solid purchase that I that I can afford. And, um, you know, so it's one of those things where if I'm ready, I'll, I'll pull the trigger and go. And so what I heard you saying is that you don't really have a timeline to be in your new home, but within a year, you would like to. It would be great. Yeah. Um, well, I would love to help you find that perfect home. And one of the things that I offer at no cost to you is a free buyer consultation to really dig deep about making sure that your home search is efficient and smooth. 
So would you be able to meet on Sunday at one or Monday at three? Um, I think, I think Monday would probably work better for me. All right, great. Um, why don't we, would you prefer a Zoom meeting or would you like to meet in person? Um, yeah, I think, I think just Zoom for now. Okay, wonderful. So let me just make sure I have your email up exactly the right way. Can you tell it to me again so I make sure I have it? Um, Curtis Blomberg, C-U-R-T-I-S-B-L-O-M-B-E-R-G at kw.com. Awesome. All right, Curtis, I'm going to send you a calendar link with an invite, and then I will give you a call the day before just to confirm that we're still on track. Sounds great. Awesome. Thanks, Curtis. Yep. Easy peasy, my friends, right? All right. So, what, I'm so, so when did you say you're doing having this discussion? This is when you're first talking to somebody. So if I met Curtis at an open house, now some open houses are a little chaotic, but I'm starting to, and that was a little bit more stilted and less conversational than I normally would do because I was trying to make sure I got all the questions for you guys. But that's why practice makes perfect, right? I actually have those conversations all the time, um, but I've been doing it for 25 years, so I don't have that lead sheet. It's up here in my brain. Um, so I was trying to show you guys how to make sure you get most of those questions answered. So thinking about that questions that you all just downloaded and you just saw me do, do you think you could do that? You think you could have those conversations? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ready? Oh yeah. I didn't hear you guys. Unmute. Unmute. Ready? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 Before we take a break, we're going to do some practice. So I hope you all have your sheets ready. And what I'm going to do is do a few breakout rooms and you guys are going to practice with each other. Let's see, I'm gonna do some breakout rooms. Create. You're gonna go in, you're gonna use the buyer lead sheet to find out what the buyer's looking for. You are gonna have about 10-ish minutes. So probably at minute five, I will say switch. And one of you will be an agent, one of you will be a buyer, and then you'll switch. Yeah, if okay. there are three in your group, Two of you can be a couple, right? And play off each other and have somebody practice talking to a couple at an open house. Any questions about what you're gonna do in breakout rooms? Are you guys ready to practice? Because practice makes perfect, right? All right, click on and join a room. I'm gonna leave myself out, Warner. If you want to reshuffle. Yeah, that's fine. What room were you in, Mike? Eight. Nope, was eight. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. We'll see. Oh, sorry. Eighteen. Okay. That's all right. Nobody's in there anyway. So I'm looking now to see who's by themselves to make sure nobody's by themselves. Brooke, hang in there. We're just shuffling the deck a little bit. I put somebody in your room, Brooke, if you want to go back. Oops, she moved. Okay. Brooke, if you want to mute, you know how to go back? Oh, I thought I was unmuted. How do I go back? Hit the breakout rooms button in the bottom right hand oh, corner. Yeah. Yep, and select room 18. Uh, we got 16. Oh, I'm sorry, 16. Yep, 16. And just hit join next to the room number.
think everybody's in a room with somebody. Yeah, I think you're good. John, did you not get into a room? I was, but then um, it didn't, uh, there didn't seem to be any response. All right. What room were you in, John? You were in room two? I'm not sure which room it was, to be honest. All right, I'm gonna move you to room three. Try that room. Okay. Does it come up with a, a little? You should have gotten a thing that just said I moved you. But if not, the bottom of the screen, click on breakout rooms. Okay. And okay, then... I see it. Perfect. Lorna, do you have um, Curtis's, like give him as a text? His um, buyer guides? Yeah, I was just going to ask him if he wanted to share it to email it to me. I can facilitate that. I only have his client uh, information sheet. I don't have his buyer guide. I think he uses the buyer guide from um, our Facebook page. Oh, the I'm sorry. Not the buyer guide. I meant the, the sheet. The client. Yeah. Hold on. I, I have it. I'll forward it to you and you can make it a Google. It is. Oh, he, he just he just actually forwarded it to me. Disregard. Nice. Right. He's in the buyer's guide. Great. Sorry, I was late. Oh, don't worry, I think you mentioned you were gonna be, so. <laughs> I, I got out of PT late and I hit construction on the way home. It's the worst. Yeah, it was not happening. Has it been five minutes? I feel like it has been five minutes. I'm just gonna broadcast a switch. Pause.